and we're back, and I couldn't hear a thing, so I'm going to let John take over for this part, because I... What's that? I couldn't hear. I, I don't know. I don't oh, know. I'm, I'm supposed to know something? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, You're not just a pretty face. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend here. <laughs> so, Far from it. So tell us about yourself, and tell us about your company a little bit. Okay. So I'm Zalima Escobedo. I'm with Everson Equity. Our, uh, the owner of the company is only 24 years old, and what he did, he graduated from Harvard, has a psychology degree, doesn't use it in what we do, but he does business, creative business funding. So what happens is in business, he, he owns a business and he saw the hardships where the banks ask for too much because they, they want super safe, guaranteed, you're right. gonna make it. But we know that a lot of successful businesses, you've had to take a risk. And that's what he comes in and he kind of knows the models where we can be creative in getting you money. And that's what we do. So a lot of people that normally would not get funded, we fund them. Now, there is stipulations, and that's where we would come in and have a conversation with you. Um, A lot of times you may be off by just a little bit to get a line of credit. And the great thing we wanted to come here for contractors is because contractors sometimes, you want to bid a bigger job, but you're like, if I get the job, now I have to go through financing, how am I going to get that money? So what we do is we get you the money, have the line of credit ready. So if you get the job, it's there already and you start using it right away. One thing I forgot to say is that most of our programs, you have no interest for the first 12 to 24 months. Oh, wow. You use it, no interest, zero interest. How does that, I mean, even if the project is going to wrap up previous to that timeline? Well, we have very, very good relationships with banks. We're not even going with private money. A lot of people think we're going with you know, uh, certain, I I, I don't want to say creative because we are creative, but things that are normally very unusual, we're not, we're actually going with banks. Okay. But we know how to get you through that. We know the loopholes. We know that sometimes it's one little thing and that's the reason you didn't get approved. Because you know, the bank's very broad. I used to be a mortgage lender, very broad, you know, on why you didn't get approved. And you're like, what does that mean? Well, we don't. We know why you're not getting approved. And it's one little issue that maybe your credit card was over 25% in use, you know, and you need to be under 20. We know all those. Now, not me, but the owner. Right. I do more of the marketing side and tell you about the products. And he comes in and he breaks it down. This is what your problem is. That's and funny. he's a little, I tell people, I'm 47. He's 24. He's like one of those kids obviously he went to harvard but you know that's a whiz kid that's who he is uh, doogie hauser of lending yes like that <laughs> pretty much yes yes so what what size projects do y'all go after like is there a minimum is there a maximum like- Are most of the time we're, we're open to everything and we're also open to individuals but we specialize in commercial that's what we specialize commercial. in because we're really trying to get higher amounts but normally our commercials start off at 150 and they max out at 2 million. Okay. Uh, my brother actually, let me give you a perfect example. Went to the credit union. They got him a $40,000 line of credit. He's a contractor. He only got that a month ago. So I told him, "Let us see what we can get you." This week we got him half a million dollars. Oh wow. That's, half that's a million. A big step 40, up from 40,000. <laughs> same document. <laughs> same documents. Credit union is easier than a bank, right? Wow. Everyone knows that. Sure. They gave them forty. We gave them half a million. Well, and that's 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 incredibly important, especially for some of these contractors, like a lot of the folks we have here that are scaling so quickly exactly. and so rapidly. Yes, you have to have the financial backing to support that growth. Yes, it sounds like you guys are good about thinking outside of the box yes. to, to create that available. So we're the here. solution to a lot of the growth. You know that people are stuck. I've talked to contractors, and they're like, "I want to grow," but. They're not seeing my project when we present it differently. Yeah. So, I mean, for, for people who are kind of just getting into business, what, what would, how would you describe the difference between like a line of credit and a loan? Well, a line of credit is open. You can have it there, not use it until you need it. Um, and then on top, the, the 12 to 24 months, no interest versus you have, a, you know, if you get a loan, you have to start paying interest on it right away. Right, right. and you have to take ownership of that lump sum of yes. money, right? And exactly. so once you receive that, you're paying interest, you know, Immediately. compounding. So make sure you do something with it right away yeah. right. versus a line of credit. What if you don't get the job? Right. What if you don't and it's sitting there? Now, normally a bank won't do that. Normally a bank wants you to have, I want the contract, all these underwriting because they're super safe. That's what they're trying to do. With us, we see the potential. We're, we put it together in a package where it makes sense to the underwriter. That's our specialty. 
Within your time at the company, what was the most, if you can tell us, I know there's non-disclosure agreements and legal stuff that I don't get, but uh, of your time with the company, what's the most interesting job you guys have funded? Um, I think my brother's just because I can prove to you the 40000 Yeah. you know, being super yeah, safe. That is really cool. To half a million. Okay. I think that one that's personal and I got to see it. I got to see both sides of it, how the bank was... You know, I understand they have their guidelines, but they're almost, and again, I used to be a mortgage lender. It's almost like find a reason to not approve. On ours, it's backwards. Find a reason to approve. Well, yeah, that's something that, that I think about all the time is that, you know, banks and, you know, they're not in the business. They're not necessarily in the people business. They're in the business of taking money and making more, right? Yes. And so they have a box that they have to fill and yes. everything has to fit perfectly. And yes. when it doesn't, that's when people get denied, right? Yes. And so you have the flexibility to look outside of that box and say, okay, on paper, maybe it doesn't look great, but they have the opportunity to do this incredible project. We've seen their, you know, their history. We know they're smart people. They're going to succeed. And that's what they saw. What they saw, how we got him approved is he went back and we got to present all his projects that he's done. He's done projects in Cancun. He's done projects um, locally, small, big. He's bought and sold. And they saw say, wow, everything he's done is profitable. Yeah. You know, so yeah, we can take a bigger risk. We'll take a half a million risk. And there you go. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. I, so, how do people find you? Well, I'm going to give up my cell number because, oh. uh, yeah, my <laughs> cell number, I don't know if this is going to be out. It's 409-549-4919. Okay, very Everson good. Equity. And then, can be, are you guys on social media? Do you guys have a website? You know, we're, we don't market because what we do is we do this more on one-on-one. Oh, wow. So that's pretty much how we how we do it. And then we get referral-based. You can see how people refer people to jealous. us. Yeah, I'm right. jealous. <laughs> yeah, so we don't that's even, awesome. we don't really need to do it. And we're a small company. There's only, um, on staff, there's three of us. It's the owner, myself, and Mindy. And uh-huh. that's it. And that's all we need because if he, he has a process of, reviewing and being very fast working late at night i mean we're 10 o'clock at night like tonight we're going to leave drive two hours and all the way there mindy's going to be sending him all the information of all the leads that we have and tomorrow they're all going to get called <laughs> all right. so we work <clears throat> very fast on top of that all right That's give great. us that cell phone number one more 409-549-4919 awesome, awesome awesome thanks for thanks thank for joining you. us thank, thank you, you. you so really much have you. a good night thank you, you. all right guys we'll be right back All right, and we are back. Why don't you tell us your name and the name of your business? Uh, my name is Natalie Larson. I'm with Investor Loan Source. Scoot, scoot up a little bit there so that everyone can Sorry. hear. Scoot up a little bit oh. so they can get you the mic. There you go. Yeah, that chair scoots terribly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Must want it to, like, shock your chin whiskers. Is what gotcha. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about your business. So our business, we are based here out of Houston. Uh, the original owner of the company... Uh, him and his business partner uh, originally started buying rental properties and apartments. They grew their business to an amount. They opened up a lending company. So that is what we do. Awesome. So it's, it's, it's mainly focusing on residential properties? We focus on residential and commercial. We do, oh, you both. do commercial both. Okay. Absolutely. So is it any kind of loan? Any type of investment loan. Any type of investment loan. Yes. Does, do USDA loans fall under that category? I'm sorry? USDA loans? So we do not do USDA loans or any conventional loans. Uh-huh. We, um, is, that a, is that considered a conventional? So it's conventional. Mm-hmm. We are 100% private. Okay. We don't do any FHA, no VA. We are 100% private. You're not helping anybody get a mortgage on their house. You're trying to help them build their portfolio. Absolutely. We're here for the people. So say you have a mortgage on your current house, you're getting ready to move, can't sell it, you want to rent it, you get a rental loan on it. That way we can take care of it that way. Uh, we also offer, so I know it's a really interesting time in the market. Uh, I mentioned that we're 100% privately financed. We're privately financed because we invest my products. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have funds available where you can place your, mon- your money as well. So we have different aspects of our uh, business that basically help on both sides. And we keep everything in-house. You, you said something that absolutely fascinated me because of where we're at in the real estate market right now. You said you're trying to sell, you know, you talk about the rental loan. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm here at every day. Uh, we finished the rehab and we can't sell it. 
it's just sitting. It's like, I don't know what to do with it. It's like, well, what does your rental look like? Can you do it as a rental? Can you do it as a vacation rental? How does that work for you? Mm-hmm. Did you think of an extra exit strategy when you thought about this? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, our rental loans, we actually offer 5, 20, and 30 year options. 100% DSCR based, so we're gonna make sure it cash flows for you as well. Well, so, and, and with you guys being private, are you guys able to be a little more competitive on the interest rates that everybody's freaking out about right now? So, our interest rates, um, we are 100% private capital. Our investors do like being paid, so sure. they, they may be on the higher end, but here's the thing. We can review your deal 100% and tell you if it's a good deal, and since we are 100% private money, our rates aren't as volatile. Right. We've raised our rates twice in the entirety of our company. Yeah. Well, I would imagine your process is not as lengthy and overwhelming. And So we're 100% asset-based. We're going to look at the property. Uh, we do obviously care a little bit more about the borrower, but at the end of the day, is the property good? Is the yeah. asset is the asset good? And is, is the advantage that you guys bring to the table, is it more speed of you know, being able to move funds? on a property or how did, what, why would someone choose you over going to a bank is what I'm asking. So a lot of people come to us, especially newer investors come to us because we have the knowledge bank back of being ah. able to review a deal, tell you if it's good or not gotcha. and making sure that you're not getting into a bad situation. The other people that come to us are people that have already used their 10 conventional mortgages mm-hmm. or they want a portfolio in because we have portfolio loans. So they'll come to us when they run out of the bank money or when the hedge funds will dry up. Ah, okay. Okay. So, and what are you guys, I mean, like there's there's a lot of weird stuff happening in the market right now. I, I would, the last episode I was reporting on a story out of the UK. People are starting to, they're having to take 3% below uh, asking price in the UK right now. And so like, we're, and you know, Redfin and Zillow, they're laying off like over 10% of their staff. Like they're seeing some stuff. What do you, what are you guys seeing happening in the market right now? Ooh, that's that's a long drawn out answer. <laughs> um, so as far as the market is concerned, I mean we're still not even at average. If you look back over the last several decades, going back to like this uh, 1972, right? Average market interest rates were about six percent. Yeah, we haven't capped it. We won't cap it. I do foresee them going lower. I, I do foresee them dropping about a point, but it's going to take some time. Sure. Um, the biggest thing, I had a conversation with a lady earlier, a realtor earlier, that a lot of buyers need to understand, and home buyers too, is when you're looking at a property, it may be worth $450,000 two years ago, mm-hmm. and may have got five, $500,000 for sale. Doesn't mean you're going to sell it for that now. So here's the thing now. Now you're probably selling it for 400. Right. So you're looking at that margin, whether that interest rate is going to be higher. Even though the interest rate's higher, your product's lower. You're paying the same amount. Paying the same amount. Yeah. True. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, it's a very interesting thing. Is it us as as homeowners and average Joe? We got used to seeing that you know three point, like that three point <laughs> two five or three, and now we're looking at six and three quarters. Yeah. Right. And. And it's going to be interesting to see what the market does with that. Anyway. Some of us are old enough to remember when it was in the double digits. <laughs> okay, we've, we've had two generations of fantastic interest rates that yes. we got spoiled on. Yeah, big well, time. We're, we're just going to keep that spoiling going on. We're not going to bring it back up to <laughs> no. the 70s and 80s. We don't need to do that. Yeah, let's just, no, let's, Nobody wants that. Okay, I foresee it going back down, so it'll be okay, guys. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, if people want to get a hold of you, they want to check out the, the, the products that you guys use on, on these uh, investments. How do they get a hold of you? So, uh, best way to get a hold of me, um, or actually just visit our uh, website, it's www.ils.cash. So, that is where all of our products are. We are an extremely transparent company. Um, or you feel free to give me a call at 713-904-3431. Awesome. And th- you guys on social media at all? Sorry? On social media at all? Oh, we are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We on LinkedIn. You name it. Okay. Um, Investor Loan Source. No funky TikToks? No TikToks. Okay, good. Oh, come on. <laughs> they're they're kind of fun. I like you better already. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have against TikTok? Uh, everything. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, besides the obvious, they can be pretty fun. They can be pretty fun. Let's not go there. Let's go back to the show. Let's Let's go back to the show. So, thank you so much for sitting down with us. It was really good to meet you. Thank you guys for having me. All right, have a good night. <laughs>
All right, man. Have, have you learned anything tonight? I've, I've learned a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Anything that stands out in particular? Uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. This is fantastic. I yeah, I, I mean, I didn't realize... I, I, one, like, I did not realize there was, like, a, a community of uh, Hispanic contractors. Like, that, that was super cool to find out that. Absolutely. Um, I, I did not know about how private money worked in a, in a lot of ways. I learned a lot about that tonight. Um, and then how someone can go from having a $40,000 line of credit to just changing who they're working with rather than a, um, it wasn't a bank, it was a, uh, what was it? Uh, a private, inv- um, private equity. But it was a... Um, Credit union. That's what right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's credit no, union. no. He had forty grand with the credit union. With the credit union, and then he started working with her, and she was, he was able to get half a million dollars. That's crazy. I mean, that's life changing. And and the fact also, getting the you know one thing I've never really stopped and thought about the line of credit versus the loan. That's huge. Yeah. Because like I said, you take a loan, that money you're responsible it's for taking all, it all ownership of it right of away. It, yeah. And you're paying on it from day one. Line of credit. You could have a half a million dollar line of credit. And say you only use ten thousand. Well, you're mm-hmm. paying interest on that ten thousand, of course. Yeah, but zero percent for twelve months up to twenty four months on a line of credit. Can I? Yeah, I mean that's that's awesome. Where do I sign? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to buy a house with that. About to teach the homeowner show a thing or two. That's here. right. We could we could expand the show quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if we have anybody else tonight. I don't know. I'm looking around. There's a lot of people in the room. Wander off to. You got anybody else for us, bud? Two more? Come on. All right, guys. We'll be back in a second with our next guest. (laughs) All right, and we are back with Chris Turner, Southern Lux. Hello, hello. And if we ever find that SOB that took your trailer, we're just going to have a public lynching. Hey, the the reward is is bumped up to two thousand. If you is find it two it. two grand now? It is now, guys. You can find the picture of his stolen trailer online. Is two thousand dollar reward? You need to you need I'm to get it to hunting him. right. right? Get, get the get the <laughs> pictures to the Grizzly show. Hood News, man. She won't she won't post it. We've already tried. I talked to her. Yeah, she, <laughs> she said that when she posts uh, stolen items, she's oh, got yeah, yeah. Death the death there, the There's liability. It, it <laughs> actually got crazy on her. I, I what understand we, What that we need movie. is we need like an in search of ad. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I've been searching uh, the marketplace and, and offer up and yeah. let go trying to find Dude, it. I'm, I'm so sorry that happened. But anyway, so we, you've been on the show many times now. Yes, sir. So what, what's new? Same old same. Still same building, old same? Still building barn doors, uh, still doing some custom homes, some remodels. Uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, attic build-outs Oh, really? Lately. Attic yeah, we've build-outs. had an influx of those here lately for whatever reason. Uh, what do they call them, like Texas attics with the staircase that goes up to yeah. them? Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. They're typically a little weird looking because it's an afterthought. So the, to, to get to them is like a random, <laughs> door, a random doorway Texas, that looks Texas like a closet. Texas basement. Texas basement. Texas basement. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Texas attics? No, we all have Texas They attics. go up. We should call them Louisiana basements as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I'm actually curious because I know, I know you've been doing this for a long time. What in the last two years have you seen the prices change the most on as far as like materials? Uh, lumber. Lumber. Lumber's gone up, 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 and then now it has come way back down. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it back to pre-pandemic levels? Almost. Okay. Almost. It's close. It's close. It's still, I'd say, like like on a two-by-four, we're still 60, 70 cents higher than pre-pandemic, but it's, it's come down a lot. Um, but every other material has went up. Mm-hmm. So that's... The, the issue, yeah. With, with, with everybody's prices are rising. How is the availability of products? Has that we, improved? Definitely, a hundred percent has improved. Uh, we 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 struggled for a while with some of our suppliers. Um, windows, <laughs> windows was a huge deal for a long time. Mm. Uh, big delays with windows. We've since kind of worked through that, found some new suppliers, um, but uh, just. Everything's went up. I mean, wires went up, uh, the switches. I mean, every last aspect of the build. Uh, a eight foot piece of sheetrock right now is around eleven dollars, where pre-pandemic we were at like seven fifty ish. Yeah. Uh, so, like I say, 
some stuff went up, some stuff came back down, but the majority of items that go into a build have went went up and stayed up. Hmm. God, is there is there something in the build where your clients are go okay, are taking a cut on something where traditionally they would I'm like I'm thinking sheetrock. I mean, are there other like wall materials that they could be using that are a better price? Are they opting for you know less quality insulation or like what, what how are they how are they dealing with this are they just paying the price or are they just making the adjustments they're typically just paying the price it's, really it's, i mean we we try to work with everybody as much as we can but it's one of those things you know our, our, our price is our price at the yeah, end yeah. of the day if, if that's the way that you want to do it then unfortunately that's where the the, the price is going to fall typically you know most people will be motivated buyers in the first place will They'll come up with the with, with the extra money, right? When you're when you're building custom homes, your your clients are typically going to be built. You're building something to last a, you know, a lifetime, a legacy type home, absolutely. Right? So this isn't you know regular production, you know builder grade homes. No, no, we're and, we're, we're not going to Home Depot and, and picking up your cabinets <laughs> and, and, and whatnot. I'm not going to knock any specific uh, builders tonight, but I could. I, uh, but if you guys want to sponsor the show. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we will hawk that stuff like none other. <laughs> right. So I mean like I'm I'm thinking like insulation. I mean, are you guys using foam insulation typically or are you guys Yeah. Yeah. We we do foam insulation um on basically a hundred percent of our new builds. Really? Uh, unless it's a conventional home. Now conventional homes we don't typically spray foam, but all of our barn dominiums are spray foam. Um some will opt to upgrade and go closed cell. Some will stick with the open cell. It just really depends on on budget. There's a pretty big price difference between yes, the two. There, it, it's about double. Yeah. There's an open cell spray foam. Yes. I'm yes. Learning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you go to Home Depot and look at the spray foam cans, the ones that say uh, window and door, that's going to be your your closed cell stuff. Gotcha. But, Basically, your, your closed cell is going to create a moisture barrier right. where an open cell is just like a sponge. If it gets wet, it's going to absorb the moisture. Stay wet. Closed cell, it's just going to repel <laughs> yeah. right off of it. Yeah. Potential mildew farm. Exactly. Well, yeah. it is, there's no means to dry it out. No. Once no. it's wet, it's wet forever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Once it's done. wet, you, you have no choice but to rip it out. There's right. no drying it out. That's the worst. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Trying to think what else has been happening in the in the building world recently. I've been hearing about. So I, I've never had a chance to meet you before. But tell me one of the most unique features you feel like you've ever put into a home. Hmm, that's a tough one. I'll be honest, we we don't really get a, a lot of people doing a lot of really cool things. Um, we've been doing a lot of really cool doors and stuff lately. Um, obviously, we've We've doubled our business year over year, so we're getting we're we're just now getting to the point where we have the kind of clientele that wants to do the cool Extremely stuff. Extremely custom yeah. stuff, yeah. exactly, exactly. We're, we're just now getting to that point, so we're doing a lot of like really cool, big like sliding doors and garage doors in the living room type. I was going to ask about that. Do you, have you done some of those big glass ones that are yes. like? Yeah? yeah, we have one. Well, actually, we have two two that are currently being built right now that have big huge doors in them uh i mean because i've looked into these uh -huh. you know, like it, should i expect to pay you know between 10 and 15 grand to get something like that installed absolutely yeah absolutely uh, you can expect to pay somewhere between 9 and 12 just for the door just for itself, the material, yeah and then you know another three four thousand dollars for for install do you, do you want one do I want one? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be cool. It'd be really cool. I'd love to have one. I've seen them. I've even seen them where they're, it's like a half one that they put over the kitchen counter. Yeah. So you can open up your kitchen yeah. counter to the outside. Yeah. Yep. So cool. I, yep. it, but at the same time, where we live, that's uh -huh. good for like 17 days a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. True. Very true. Um, I'll take them. But I want it. I, I want it. Don't want get it. me wrong. I want it. I want it. <laughs> Well, and you guys, you guys just opened up your your office with the new showroom and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. So we we rebranded. Yeah. Uh, we kind of gave the, the the company a little facelift, new logo, new colors, things like that, and we did a, a ribbon cup ribbon cutting with the uh, uh, was it Lake Conroe? Lake Conroe the, Chamber of Lake Commerce. Commerce. Yeah. Lake Conroe Chamber of Con we're we're in two of them, so I can yeah. confuse. <laughs> what, what's the other one? 
Conroe. It's Lake Lake Conroe and then Montgomery. Yeah, we're in Lake Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce and then Montgomery Chamber of Commerce as well. Gotcha. Okay. I I have trouble differentiating the two. (laughs) It's hard to remember all that. You want to make sure you get people's brand right, right? Exactly. (laughs) Anything else you want everybody to know? No, no, I don't. Nothing special. Um, you can contact us online. Visit our website www.southernluxhomeinnovations.com. Nine three six two zero five sixteen seventeen is the phone number. <laughs> you can tell you're not the office manager. Exactly. <laughs> you don't call it all that often. Huh? I feel like my seven year old trying to remember her mom's phone number right now. <laughs> well, good deal, man. I, dude, it's always good to see you. What was that? It's always good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank man. you. Good to see you too, man. Yeah. So, you too, Mr. Cowboy Jack. Thank you, sir. We see you on our TV every now and then. Uh, oh, yeah, your kids, your kids yeah. tune in? <laughs> <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to take a photo. Okay. Say, exactly. Like, exactly. But on the, the Texans episode, we just got done filming with the Houston Texans. It was awesome. Cool. Cool. We'll definitely <laughs> check it out. <laughs> So you, got a, you got a fan right there. I know. It's yeah, well, see, it somebody like, knows who you I are. I can here. see it in his eyes, actually. You, you facilitate <laughs> some quiet time at their house. As well. <laughs> I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> there was a couple people like, who's the guy in the middle? I said, man, that's Cowboy Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Nice see you, bud. Right. All right, and we're back with Crystal from Rogel Gutters. So, are you, are you guys an installation company? No, we do gutters. Do I not, what, like, oh, what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> install, yeah. It's you, you install, install the gutters? gutters? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, is, is it mostly new construction, or are you replacing old ones for the most part? Uh, we do both. Sometimes people don't have any gutters, and they want to get some to help okay. protect their foundation, their fascia, their soffit, everything they need to protect from the water. We'll install that. And some people have a very old gutter system that they need replaced because it's not functioning anymore. Yeah, what, what is the biggest issue with people's gutters? Like, it, it, like when they're older, is it just be, like they get filled with gunk or is it just like they're worn down and bent? And like what? Um, the biggest issue people have is their very old gutters. And the installation process is quite a bit different now and it's a better system. It's installed with brackets instead of like the giant nails if you've ever seen an old right, gutter yeah, system. Yeah. Um, and those, it's just like a nail hole. Once it's there, you can just slide that nail in and out. <laughs> um, and once it slides out, you, you can pop it in all day long, and it's just going to keep popping out. Yeah. So those are the systems that you have to replace because there's just no quick fix for that. Yeah. You have to replace it. And there, there's nothing worse than a gutter that doesn't work. I've, I myself have been the victim of self-installation <laughs> on some, some plastic gutters. <laughs> not a good idea. It was not a good idea. It did not go well. My wife wasn't happy. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't happy then. And you well, can do more damage. Uh, you know, I I have a builder, you know, a, a track builder home. You know, nothing fancy. They did gutters all the way around when we built. And uh, one of our biggest problems is I can tell you the downspouts are not accurately sized. When we get a really good rain, it cannot handle all the rain that's coming. So I'm, probably, I'm sure that's a big part of y'all's business as it well. It is. Um, and there's math that has to go into this. It's there's, you know, it's not as easy as just uh, what Craig did. <laughs> yeah. Now you have to have the right system that's going to be good for your house. Some people have really crazy steep roofs with a lot of valleys, and when you have that, you need a bigger gutter system. Yeah. Because you have a lot of water that pours down all at once, yep. and your gutter will not handle it. And then you'll see the water just pouring over the gutter. So you're essentially, your gutter's not doing anything. They're doing nothing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And actually, with mine, I'm lucky enough to where it goes over the edge and then back up underneath. It's really special. Well, and sometimes you really want to get up on a ladder and take a look at that because some roofing companies will just give you like an extra long shingle that hangs over. And if your shingle hangs over too far, you're only getting about two to three inches of your gutter on no. a five-inch gutter. No, I guarantee you when they built my house, they didn't give us anything extra. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what's the best product out there right now to help with, uh, you know, like leaf guard, leaf, you know, keeping leaves and debris out of them? We use the brand Leaf Blaster Pro. Um, we use that one because it keeps out everything. Pine needles, which are really notorious around here. That's the here. worst one. That's the worst. Yeah. 
And it also is so fine that it keeps out the soot that comes down from your shingles. Really? Like the oh. little granules. It, they won't the get in your gutters either. So you don't get like that muddy sediment in the bottom? Nothing. You will have nothing in your gutters except water by design. What's the maintenance process like on those? Um, well, any guard system that you put on really only requires some maintenance, and that's in your corners. Like if you have a gutter system, you have the splash guard that's set in the corners. Right. So when you have a guard on that, anything that comes down in that corner is going to sit on top of that because it's blocked by that splash guard. Mm. So that's really the only maintenance that it requires, and that's just occasionally clean out that uh, corner. I, I'm, I'm willing to do that one. I, I'm in. That's easy. <laughs> that's nothing. That's nothing. That's absolutely, yeah, and that's it. There are like what, what percentage of your installs would you say are using the, the, the LEAF system? About 60%. 60%? percent mm-hmm. 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 That's good. And, and so on, on top of like... The regular cost of just installing the gutters, how much more is it to to get that extra guard put on there? It's considerably more. The guards are actually more than the gutters. No, they cost more than wow. the gutters. They are. Wow. Yeah. Can you retrofit with the guard or does it need do you need the new style gutters? Um all the gutters are basically the same style. They're K-style. So they're going to fit because the guards are designed to fit a K-style. Whether it's old or new, it's all the same style. So the guard will fit no matter how old your gutters are. That's cool. That's cool. That yeah. Cool. yeah. They so won't you- fit on like the, the plastic ones that are like three and four inches. <laughs> they won't fit on that. See how she was looking at me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw some. There was, Calling there you was out. a look there. There was a look. Like that guy. I know um, that guy. Mainly residential or residential commercial? We do all of it. Um, we do a lot of work for home builders, um, so we have a lot of communities and a lot of new home communities. Yeah, so. there's not, not a lot of those around right no, now. No, never. <laughs> you never see Every any. square inch available. I know. There's a lot. It keeps us busy, so we're very fortunate that we uh, got the opportunity to do that. So very cool. Have you, have you guys ever done any of the pipe gutters? No, that's a, a different kind of gutter. Like, you're talking about the half-pipe gutters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're, they're, and those aren't very functioning. They look nice. They're really pretty. Yeah, they are pretty. Yeah, no, I see them on really pretty homes. So yeah. I assume that they work, but you're telling me they don't. Um, they serve their purpose, but they're more for aesthetics than function, uh-huh. but they will function. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I mean, like, if people, that's how they want to spend their money. Right. <laughs> but you guys, you guys don't put those in? No, because those require a different kind of machine, because okay. when you're doing seamless aluminum Yeah, because you guys better, have the machine that you have. has a machine. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> know what you do, be good at it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sure. Well, cool. If, if people want to get some gutters, how do they get a hold of you? Um, we are on Facebook and, of course, on Google. We're on Home Advisor. So any search engine you can use, you'll find us. Fantastic. Yeah. Is there a website, phone number? I'm sorry? Is there a website or a phone number? Uh, I do have a, fu- a website, rogelgutters.net, and my phone number is listed on the website. It's on Facebook. It's on Google. You can awesome. find it anywhere. Just cool. look up Rogel Gutters. gutters. Reach out to her. <laughs> All right. Good to meet you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> no, I didn't know so much about gutters. I've never talked that long about gutters About before. gutters? Yeah. 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 Without having my mind in the gutters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and we are back with Top Notch. Garage right? doors, yes. Garage doors. And I, I, I want to talk about garage doors, but I want to talk about what we were just talking about here on the stage okay. with this, this scholarship program. Yes. So is it specifically for females going into the trades? Not just trades, anything to do with construction. So, construction. Yeah, so um, the organization is for women in construction, so we help women of all sorts. Um, but I have a friend who owns a trade school, and she has a young lady who's trying to go through the school right now, and most of her students are on government funding, so they have scholarships, um, and they're put through for free. Right. But there's a young lady who we can't get her approved for a scholarship, and she's really, really trying to get through the program. She... Um, um, went through some hard times in her past relationship. It's like a domestic abuse situation, and she's really trying to make a new name for herself. And the, for whatever reason, we cannot get her approved. It's something to do with like the income in her past relationship. It is what it is. Um, so I partnered with a nonprofit. I myself am not a nonprofit, so I can't give you that write off. Right. Um, but if a business owner wants to donate, they can send it to that nonprofit. They'll put it's for the women in construction, and they'll get to write it off on their taxes at the end of the year. So how do, how do folks contribute to this? How do they how do they get in touch with you? Like anyone? Yeah. 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 Oh, so I mean, we're we're 
here, but yeah. we're also here. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> um, I can share with the link. I can share the link with you guys, and they'll be able to go up on there. It's on our website. Um, and so the other, the nonprofit is actually called 12 Basketfuls Outreach, and they focus on education, not just women in construction, but really anywhere, um, all kinds of fields. So it's our way to give you that write-off as a business on like the legal sense if that makes sense and how, how much do we need to raise thirty five hundred dollars will put her through the eight-week program yeah. and she will graduate as an electrician that's that's not much i mean like that's attainable yeah. i feel like we ought to be able to do that and here tonight i would think so yeah, yeah. and that thirty five hundred dollars that includes her tuition her tools um all the hands-on training literally everything awesome i, I think that's awesome i mean like the more women in the industry the better yeah yeah so, so tell, tell us about some garage doors so I have a garage door company. We repair and replace garage doors on houses and commercial buildings. Um, I've been in the industry for seven years. I've had the company for five. I do mostly new construction, so I work a lot with builders. Um, I would say about 90% of the business is new construction. And then, you know, if individual homeowners call me, I, I'm still able to service it, but it's not like, I guess, my target market, if you were to right. say. So you, you put, whenever you build, you're doing new construction, you put your information on the back of the door, mm-hmm. and whenever they need you, they call you, but yep. you do such a good job the first time out. It never oh, happens. <laughs> yeah, so we put our stickers out there. Um, builders have a one-year contract or one-year warranty, so if anything happens within the one year, you know, obviously they'll call us out. But after that time, you know, our stickers are there, our cards are there. We make sure to leave um, some type of an imprint, and then, you know, for future reference, they'll be able to call us. Great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know what they say about the garage door business, though, right? No. It has its ups and downs. That's a good one. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Okay. I, I hope it has its own. Yeah. He's, he's been waiting for you all night. I have. I have. <laughs> I like holding on to that I've joke. I've got this one. This is going to be great. <laughs> no, that's a good one. Okay. So, so what's new in the garage door industry? Like, has there been any advancements in the insulation materials? Maybe the garage door openers? I mean... Openers, definitely. So... First, insulation, it's kind of cool, but it's not, unless you're like living or you have something going on in the garage, maybe like a gym or something, it's really not like that significant. So if you have an at-home garage, then maybe get the two inches of insulation and it'll help cool temperatures. But really, insulation isn't the biggest thing here. Now, when you go to places where it gets very, very cold, like Alaska, that's where you see like the really high tech um, mm-hmm. insulation. They're, stuff. Yeah, they're like they're inserting all these chemicals into it to help maintain certain temperatures. It's much beyond. Do I call heating a garage door? <laughs> 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 um, but as far as openers go, in the last five years or so, we've seen some pretty crazy advances. So now, well, a lot of newer homeowners they know there's a MyQ technology, so you can control your garage door opener from your phone if anything. Thing. You can That's open and close awesome. it from anywhere in the world. The coolest thing now is Amazon can control it too. So if you opt, oh, it is kind of cool. You can put a camera <laughs> no, in there. No, I'm with you. Like they can open the door. And put the I package. see your face. I understand oh, yeah, the value yeah. of it, but it's still creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you can get. Well, it the, stops the porch pirates. What was that? Stops the porch pirates. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So no, exactly. I see the value. I see the value. Yeah. And you can put a camera on the actual opener, or so, you know, there's a feature where the opener itself comes with the camera, so you can literally watch them. Yeah. And then if let's say it doesn't really happen because Amazon is pretty good, but like let's say they throw your package in and it breaks, whatever it is, then you have footage of them breaking yeah. your package, and it's pretty cool. No, but I, I definitely see the value in that. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. So me, myself, I order a lot of things to be shipped to my house. It's just simple, and and especially in the garage door world. So um, it's nice to know that it's not going to get stolen off my porch and I don't have to like go on my neighborhood page and be like does anybody know who this is like yeah I, no, I, it, it's if anybody the happened to walk off with <laughs> well, it's, it's the it's the uh, holidays right now and everybody's got a ton of packages coming yeah. in and the porch pirates is a real concern so that's a great resource a great great I mean I I, I made a funny face but at the same time it is a great advancement in yeah. that world yeah, it's been. I mean, like they, they've been they've been promoting that for a while. Are you guys mainly installing metal doors? Are you guys doing any wooden ones or glass? glass. Or? So I do all kinds of um, different styles. So mostly aluminum. That's the most popular. That's the most economical. Right. Um, 
Now, I work with a, a couple of custom home builders. There was actually a, a gentleman from one of the builders that I work with. Um, he sent his representative tonight. She was here. Uh, they do wood overlay. So there's levels to, like, the cost efficiency. So there's aluminum, and there's wood stained, where it's like an aluminum door where they paint it to look like wood. Yeah, and they, they look it pretty looks good. fantastic. Then yeah. there's, like, aluminum with wood overlay. So they take the regular door. They glue wood on the outside of it. Or like so a laminate it's, almost. Mm-hmm. So it's like real wood, but it's not, the door isn't completely wood. The door isn't wood. wood. It's just mm-hmm. the fascia. Of it. Yep. And then there's real wood doors, which I personally just don't recommend because it rains so much here that real wood doors absorb absorb that moisture. It's so mm-hmm. humid as well. And in seven to eight years, the your sun beats it up, very yeah. expensive door yeah. is trashed. Mm-hmm. And wood doors, like... I don't know. Before I got into the garage door world, when I thought of wood doors, I never realized like how expensive they are because you think wood and you're like, ah, it can't be that bad. But then you see the price tag and you're like, what? Yeah. You see like a twenty thousand dollar door and you're like, yeah, no, like twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. And you're like, what? I mean, I love a good garage door, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not much. twenty grand yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we always one of our like slow slow like make a great first impression so the wood door yes it's nice but there are so many other ways you can get around that style you can do the the aluminum that's painted to look like wood Mm -hmm. now they even on amazon they have all these like do-it-yourself painting kits where you can paint your own regular door to look like it's wood stained yeah i'll I'll leave that up to the experts yeah (laughs) that's a good that's a good statement because we see so many people who are like well i can fix it myself and then they end up in a bigger mess than they originally were and you're like well you should have just called me ahead i'm i'm actually the anti-handyman uh, it's, it's not good, and I, I've accepted. I've, I'm at peace with it. You well, know? it's important that you've accepted it. That's, yeah. that's, that's step the first one. step. Yeah, right? that, that really you have a problem. Yeah. 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 Have, have you seen the the shift in some of the garage door openers where instead of being on the ceiling, they're now like on the side? Yeah. So those are called jack shaft garage door openers, oh. and they're wall mounted instead of ceiling mounted. Yeah. They're very nice. They're very quiet. They're very good for people who want that overhead storage space, uh-huh. but with all great things, there's a great cost. So are they, they are, are they really more a lot more? Expensive? They're probably like double. So like okay. just like rough numbers don't hold me to anything. Like you could probably get like a regular door for anywhere from like four hundred to six hundred dollars. And when you start talking about those openers that are wall mounted, you're looking at a thousand to twelve hundred to fourteen hundred, yeah. depending on. When exact- you say wall mounted, are we talking about? Just, just the opener, so, right? So, okay. So, when you have a regular garage door opener, it has a seven or eight foot rail, and it picks the door up from the middle of the door. Right. When you have a wall mounted opener, it hangs on the side where that torsion tube is, and instead of pulling your door open, it turns the the, the torsion tube, and it raises it. But there's no rail. It's like Batman stuff. Yeah. It's cool. I, yeah. No. I, they're pretty cool. Right. Yeah. And I'm, they're like silent because there's no belt jingling there's no chain. i have the loudest garage door openers in the world yeah yeah and, and so like for, in your opinion like worth it yeah 100 percent. if yeah. it's in the budget and i have a lot of custom She's like, yeah i'll install those all day long <laughs> i have a lot of custom home builders and i tell them i'm like listen this is a selling point like if it's within your budget when you're selling uh, a million dollar house your 1200 hundred dollar opener is nothing it's, to yeah, you right. But it is a very big selling point to people with children because think about it. If your baby is asleep home and somebody comes home and opens that garage door and it just sounds like the whole world is going up in flames. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's me. That's me. I have a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And if my, if my wife gets home late, like say she's got girls' night or something, she gets home late. The whole house. It sounds up. like we're dropping Thor's hammer on the house. <laughs> yeah. Like it's intense. Yeah. Well, and the kids' room is always by the garage. Absolutely. Yeah. Every time. Or if you have a two-story home, all the kids' rooms oh, are on yeah. top Stairs. of the garage. Yeah. So it's like it's a it's a selling point, honestly. When you think about the luxury of never hearing somebody come into the house, like, yeah. That's, Money well spent. Yeah. yeah, money well spent. And we're not talking about a significant investment. I mean, we're not I'm not saying it's crazy. I'm not saying yeah. it's nothing, but at the same time, if you're gonna do it, 
do it the way you want it. Yeah. And then you're happy with it every day, day in, day out. Yeah, the way you're going to enjoy it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing about those openers is they do tend to last longer. There's less parts involved. There's less things that could possibly break. So when you have a regular opener with like an eight foot rail, seven foot rail, there's so many things that make it revolve and you could have a little sprocket that breaks. Okay, well now you got to send somebody out. They got to pull your opener down. They got to fix it. When you just have something on the wall that's just turning a tube, so much easier, so, so much less issue, so many like... I've, yeah. I've seen some pretty uh, pretty dangerous videos with those springs. Popping. They're very dangerous. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. They kill people. Yeah. No, they do. So Absolutely. there was there was probably my worst ever garage door experience. Um, it was right around the time I got into the industry. There was a gentleman who was like a very old school. I can fix anything. I can do it myself. And he tried fixing, putting tension onto the spring. So the springs are mounted to a center plate then you turn them with like metal tubes and that's how you add tension to the springs but what people don't understand is there's so much power behind those springs so like the average eye has no idea but that guy was trying to like mess with it himself and he actually like cut his hand like like in half like his, his oh my gosh. wrist was dangling and he, then he was stuck in the garage so he had to uber to the hospital because he couldn't get his car out and i'm like listen like oh my gosh you should have just called me from the beginning yeah. why would you mess with I'm surprised this the uber didn't cancel on him like hey you ain't getting in here it's yeah. you're all bloody and stuff <laughs> Yeah. And there are like a tarp. <laughs> there are safety stickers and stuff, especially in new construction, we're required to put stickers and hang things to let people know like this is not something to like mess right, around but with. When it when it la- when the door lasts twenty, twenty five years, you got the second or third mm-hmm. generation owner of that home coming through they don't care they don't they, care they think they can fix that I mean, like i said i recognize that i can't fix anything yeah. so i don't but <laughs> there are people that try no there are a lot of people and i always tell them I'm like listen like do it yourself if that's what you feel safe but make sure you have good insurance because it's gonna be worse <laughs> when you have to make an insurance claim in the long run Very so good point. awesome well if, if people want to get their their door replaced or worked on how do they get a hold of you yeah i what was the last part? How do they How get a hold of you? Oh, um, so I'm on social media. Um, Jazz the Garage Door Girl. I have the my Top Notch Garage Door page. We have a website. Um, the best form of contact is always just call me, text me. I get a lot of things on social media, so direct cell phone is good. Uh, for the women in construction, same thing. We have a website. We have social media platforms, all of those. Awesome. Thank you so much for sitting down. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And if anybody um, is interested in donating in the future, that link will still be available. We're going to be taking donations up until the end of December for this young lady, and hopefully we can come up with the $3,500. Right. Okay. Awesome. If you get the chance, uh, put it in the comments on the the video. That's a good way for people to see it. Perfect. Um, People, I assume it's clickable. Yep, it's all digital. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This is our last guest. We're going to shut down for the evening. We're going to come out and visit with you guys. Thank you so much for uh, going on this journey with us. Anything you want to add at the end here? It was it was a cool journey, right? Yeah. Do you want you want to jump on the mic real quick? There is it. No, yeah, man. I'll jump on. Just come on, quick sec, man. What you what you want to say? Thank you to you guys (laughs) for being here. You know, first off, uh, I know. uh, we changed some things up last minute and we made you know, it work we made it work and i really appreciate both of you and your time that you spent up here interviewing everybody and the content that we'll be able to create from this splitting up all the clips and getting them out to them so they can promote themselves and use the, uh, oh, the interviews sure. as content i think that's going to be great so yeah. um man can't thank you guys I enough i think some of the some of the in-depth details that we got from some of these contractors tonight were just absolutely incredible yeah you know sometimes people don't realize they have the information in them until somebody who's completely oblivious me right here uh, starts asking them the questions and then they're all of a sudden they're they've been talking 10 minutes about an aspect of garage doors that they didn't even realize they had so much knowledge yeah no, I think this was a great addition to the to the event um, and uh, like I said man I just really appreciate you guys being here and I look forward to bringing you out on the next one well obviously uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about it and see if we want to do it the way we did it here if we want to do it a different way but man I think it went great tonight can't thank you guys enough for being here and thanks for everybody who you know watches the homeowner show I hope you guys uh, got some value from all of our awesome sponsors tonight yeah putting a spotlight on them so absolutely that's the whole point man we want to we want to 
We want to, we want homeowners to have access to these people. We want Absolutely. them to get to know who they are, so that they know what an expert looks like in their field. Right. So that they can find like even so even if they're not here in the spring area, the Montgomery County area, if they're in Pennsylvania, that's what a garage door professional looks like. That's what a you know a, a real estate investor looks like. That's what an electrician looks like. That's how they talk. You know, they're going to be an expert in their field. They're not just going to be a salesperson that's trying to get me to absolutely. buy something. I think I can speak for every single one of the guests that came up today. And you can absolutely feel the passion they have for their field when yep. they're talking about it. Yeah. yeah. There's nobody that was sitting in your chair right now that was faking it tonight. Yeah. This yeah. is their passion, their drive, their everything. So. Man, it was great. And uh, great turnout. I know we had some terrible wrecks out there. My brother just got here. He was supposed to be here at 6. Two-hour delay to get here. Seriously? From Conroe, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. So we, But we had a great turnout. I mean, we had a good turn through all night. And uh, next one's going to be bigger and better. And we got some amazing things that we're going to do with this group that is exactly right up your alley to help, uh, you know, homeowners choose the right contractor. So we're going to be doing a – we have an online directory at the contractor network.cc. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, thorough vetting process, making sure they have the right licenses, making sure they have their LLCs, their business insurance, yeah. uh, making sure they don't have a bunch of one-star reviews on Google, <laughs> right? That's a pretty good good way to weave the bad ones out. Uh, so we got a lot of cool things going. I think the crowd's kind of winding down, and they're ready for these raffles. So appreciate Good. you guys being yeah, here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And uh, can't wait to have you guys out on the next one. So. Thank you. All right. See you guys later.